Hey guys, Master Ningen here bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video and today we are going to be showing off the low class warriors category team. Uh, if you caught the tail end of the stream that I did when the event went live, uh, once we had the Raditz farmed up and awakened we tried taking on a couple of Dokkan events to see what sort of level the team was at and what they could handle. Uh, the first suggestion from the stream was Tech Angel Goku. Uh, which proved to be way too tough. Uh, we used tons of items and I think died by the physical stage. Um, so then we decided to take on the Marseillean. Uh, we managed to get to the last phase and then died. And uh, I did use a stone to continue for the straight sake of the stream. But unfortunately, due to some technical issues and some uh, running the stream a little bit longer than I probably should have on my part, my phone died. But... You'll be uh, sad to know, I'm sure, as I was, that once I loaded the event up, once my phone was charged, we died again very soon afterwards. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a very difficult event for the team. So, this time, we have decided to take on the Tech Golden Freezer. So I wanted to try and do an event that was primarily Tech, because we have a few uh, intelligence units on the team. But this time, instead of having two freshly awakened Raditz with no orbs whatsoever, we now have a Rainbow Star Raditz friend. So hopefully that means we are now going to be able to unleash some revenge from the low class warriors on the Golden Emperor himself. Uh, sadly we don't have Turles first rotation because uh, the other bonus to this event was by having a uh, event with a stage with multiple enemies, we would get to see the advantage of the fact that the new Raditz has an AOE super that hits everyone. So, however, because the leader skill bonus uh, of the team is fairly low, it looks like we're probably not actually going to take anyone out this turn anyway. <laughs> so, but yeah, fortunately, the eight Raditz there, he has a nuking style passive that increases his attack and defense. So, because we gave him all those orbs. He uh, didn't take a lot of damage, even from the super attack. Everybody being very super attack happy, though. So, uh, we have got the Turles on rotation for the stunning. He's a great link partner for Raditz. So is Bardock. That's the one great thing about the team, is they all link ridiculously well. So, the friend Raditz, there he is, Rainbow. Not really impressive stats for a Rainbow unit, but, I mean, he is free to play. Uh, this guy went for 15 crit and 11 dodge, which is interesting, but I would have given him at least 3 in additional. I think I'd probably just leave mine with the free 5 dodge and give him 6 additional, but I can see the bonus of having that extra dodge, just so he doesn't take as much damage. Now, hopefully, because everybody here supered last turn, they're not going to super this turn, so let's see what the Rainbow Star Raditz can do. Plus, we're going to pick up a ton of tech orbs with Bardock, so we'll get a little bit of health back. And um, we still have the Whis active, so we should be okay. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. So, the fact that his defense is much higher combined with the Whis means we're perfectly fine. So, let's see what we can do. So, 374 to Frieza. A nice crit there on Shisami. And type advantage over... Togoma means that they are both done. And then Turles, not to be outshone, comes in with a crit and takes out Frieza. So get through the first stage nicely. Good showing from the Rainbow Raditz there. So there we go. This is one of the rotations that we definitely want. So let's see. Do they have any extra links together? No, they don't. So the order doesn't really matter. Uh, and what's going to give us the most orbs? Uh, if we put him there and do that, does that help us out with any of the green? Yeah, that definitely gets us a few more green orbs. So let's grab those. And then Bardock, let's see. Um, let's use a Princess Snake here. Because then we hopefully won't take too much damage. So the one thing about the team that you need to be wary of is obviously you have the lower stats overall. So you have quite a lot lower HP than we're probably used to in events now. I mean, you can see there, even with a Princess Snake active, he took 12k damage. And we only have just over 110, so... So 
So Raditz, probably the best candidate for taking the super attack there out of the two since he got a load of orbs to raise his defense. And we probably want to try and get the friend Raditz with the ape Raditz because they have a ton of links together uh, which is going to come in very handy. But I mean you can see there even with a princess snake active we took quite a lot of damage that turn. Um, I, let's see, he super attacked last turn. Hopefully he won't super this turn, plus we at least have... The friend Raditz has 11 dodge and much higher stats, so let's see. Yeah, only taking 15. Possibly in trouble if he super attacks faster though. So let's see what Turles can do, or Raditz even. Turles now see what he can do. Hopefully he can get the stun. Uh, it's one of the great reasons for him being on the team. But fortunately we do enough damage that Farsha will definitely take him out here. So, And she gets a crit for good measure. So 257k on a crit is not particularly great. Although I'm pretty sure she's super attack 1. That's the other thing with this team. is It's quite an interesting team to run. None of the units on it are particularly bad. But because they're units that you probably won't really have used for anything else. Save for maybe the Turles. And the Bardock is pretty good, uh, the AGL one as a support unit on Super AGL. But other than that, chances are you won't have used these units a huge amount. And so therefore, you're not going to have high super attack levels or anything like that on them. So, that definitely does work against you a little bit. So, grab those. We'll get the Ape Raditz to get those. And then we will use an Android 8. I'm quite surprised we haven't had a transformation actually considering just how many of the uh, we've got three awakened great ape units on the team and uh, haven't had a transformation yet so so this is our Turles. I managed to put a few orbs into him of course Raditz. I keep saying Turles. I'm getting them confused I guess it's just like Turles uh, says in the movie, the fact that the low-class Saiyans all look the same. So, uh... Hey! That's my, uh, the 8 Raditz with the level 3 dodge coming in there. Level 3 dodge for the win. So... But yeah, as you can see, we, uh, don't have the best stats, and we take quite a lot of damage every turn, so... So... Even this event, which I figured would be quite a bit easier, is proving to be a little bit tricky. So, uh, let's give you those. So, hopefully Raditz won't take too much damage here, and then Turles can get the stun, because I'm not sure if we'll finish him this turn unless we get some crits. Well, that's definitely a good start. 544. Takes 10, just over 10k on the way back. And then Turles should hopefully finish him off here. Not quite, but Bardock should do it. Yeah, just about. <laughs> that Bardock does have a dupe path open. Uh, his super attack is not really farmable because the only base form Bardock you can farm is an R that awakens to SR, which then means it only gives a 5% chance to raise his super attack. Um, I think I, may, I think I may have given him one Kai just so I could put some orbs in his bottom right up to the point where it's locked. But I opened his top left because those paths are obviously quite easy to get to. And um, that way we could give him some crits and extra additionals. So let's see. I guess we probably do want the Raditz to take... The int Raditz to take the attacks just because of type advantage. Because um, I don't think buffing his defense with the or buffing the ape's uh, defense with the orbs is going to make as much difference as the type advantage. But we're going to use a Weiss anyway as we are now on to the final stage. Um, grab a load of reds there for Farsha. So hopefully we should get the Dokon fairly soon. If we can't get it next turn. We might have to try and stall because I definitely want to try and get it with the Rainbow Raditz and just see how hard he can hit for. So, so yeah, I was doing 254 with type advantage. Yeah, Freezer always super attacks in this first turn when he becomes Golden Freezer. So I think we definitely put 
the unit's in the right place, because that would have done a fair bit more damage to the ape raditz, even with the Weiss active, so... And then Fasha. So let's see. Can we force a Dokon mode this turn? See, the problem with the team, which is, you wouldn't think it would normally be a problem, but the fact that the team links so well means that it's pretty much impossible not to super with everyone. Um... So yeah, we are not going to get the Dokon this turn. So, let's see. So we've still got a Whis active. Um, let's... We could see, we could also get the stun with Turles, so I don't want to use too many items. Uh, but also, if, uh, if Bardock takes the super at the back end, even with a Whis active, after those first four hits, we could be in trouble. So we're going to use an Android 8. Uh, we can hope that Turles gets the stun, and then we'll just grab this orb with Bardock to try and put off getting the Dokon next turn. It might be unavoidable at this point, to be perfectly honest, but... So here comes the Rainbow Friend Raditz, type advantage... 567 without a crit, that's much more respectable, so... Tyler's he can crit too, no, but 262, again, not too bad. Uh, no one taking any damage because of the double defensive items. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> Bardock taking the super attack, so with the Whis active, because the Android 8 doesn't do much against supers, he still took 55k, so... Yeah, if we hadn't used that item, we absolutely would have died that turn. So, and I guess we probably can't avoid the Dokon mode this turn. So, we might as well just go for it with our Raditz. He's obviously not going to do as much damage as the friend one would have done. But it should be more than enough to take out Frieza. And if it's not, the Strength Ape Raditz will take him out. So... Let's see. Don't give me a super speedy one. Oh, well. Pretty fast, but your boy is on the ball here. So we get all seven. So let's see what he can do. This is basically just a, pretty much a base Turles. Like I said, mine only has very few orbs in him. So let's see what he can hit for with the Dokon mode. He's got his best link partner, at least. So what can he do? Yeah, 567. I mean, that's, sort of, that's basically what the rainbow one was hitting for. So... Ideally, the rainbow one could probably have hit for upwards of 750. I don't know if he could reach a million, but there you go. So, now we are on to the final suicide stage. Um, and we basically got a full heal, so that should be all good. Um, I think for the sake of... The type advantage blocking we should probably not put Farsha at the back end just in case we uh, don't take him out straight away and then of course Teles has a chance to stun he won't come back onto rotation again anytime soon but that's fine because we should be done by the end of next turn at the least so but let's see hopefully Rainbow Raditz can just take him out here yeah, 322 pretty much does the job, so... Farsha, unfortunately, type disadvantage probably won't finish him. But in comes Teles. Should take him out? Come on, yeah, takes him out. Doesn't need a crit, 200k. So there you go, so we, found, we managed to find an event that the low-class warrior team could actually take out, even though we did have to use a few items, so... Unfortunately, as, as fun a team as it is, um, I'm a big fan of the underdog characters, especially when they get units that are actually fairly decent, but sadly, you're not going to be able to take out any of the recent Dokon events. Um, I was thinking that maybe the, I could attempt Boss Rush 2 with this team, because obviously they're never going to be able to do the one with the Super Saiyan 4s, but considering we had to use almost all of our items to beat Golden Freezer, who is on Boss Rush 2, I don't think we would actually be able to complete it all the way through, but be interesting to see. Obviously, maybe if we do get a slew of orbs coming in soon, I'm, I'm really hoping that when they give us the hidden potential update, they are generous and give us a load of orbs to actually use in the new system. But 
you never know, it is Bandai, right? So definitely won't be holding my breath, but that would be very cool. And um, I definitely would consider actually leveling up these guys, maybe putting some Kai's into them and some orbs just to see if the team can actually do something a little bit more difficult than this. But there you go. We managed to take him out. The low class warriors getting their revenge against the tyrannical emperor. So yeah, leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are new. This has been The Mars Ningen. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at The Mars Ningen. Same with Instagram. Um, I always post when new videos are up and I occasionally post various screenshots of summons or units that I have awakened or maxed out. Uh, we're on the road to 500 subscribers here at the channel. So hashtag 500 mortals plan all over the comments. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.